Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. We got some amazing community contributions and, and we got some very cool updates for Power BI. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. All right, let's dig in. Marco Russo over at SQL BI has a new blog where he announced a new external tool, which he's calling Analyze in Excel. Can you guess what it does? It's pretty simple, actually. All you do is create your Power BI desktop file. You have your model, and then you hit Analyze in Excel, and it will create the Excel file and the ODC file to connect, and you can use pivot tables against your Power BI desktop data model. Easy peasy. It does call out some limitations. Obviously, the Power BI desktop file's gotta be open, right? Otherwise, what does Excel connect to? And there are some other things as well. And he called out some future things that he's hoping to do with this external tool. So if this is something that interests you. If you're big into Excel and you want to take advantage of a data model sitting in Power BI desktop, go ahead, check out this blog post and go get that external tool. To use the external tools, remember, you've got to have the July 2020 update of Power BI desktop and you need to have the enhanced data set schema support preview option checked. Neil Hamley over at Beacon Intelligence has a video series for the DA100 certification course. What this actually is, is he's streaming every day in August, going through preparation for the DA100 exam. This is August 10th, so obviously there's been nine of these videos so far, and he's gonna continue doing that through the month of August. So if you're interested in learning what's needed for the DA100 course, Neil is a Microsoft certified trainer, and so he's got a lot of good insights and he's going through these items and also just enjoy the journey with him on he's starting to do live streaming, which is awesome. You know, at Guy in a Cube, we love live streaming. Check out these videos and hopefully it gets you on your way to passing that DA100 certification course and becoming a certified business analyst or data analyst, sorry. I'll have a link up above or down in the description below, along with links to all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items. So go check it out. We got the Power BI developer community update for August, 2020. And there were actually some pretty cool items inside of this. If you're using the .NET SDK, be sure to update that to the latest version. There was an update for the APIs. This blog also calls out just some general updates to APIs. So additional properties that are coming back, some new APIs itself. Also on the embedding side, there were some very cool items. You can do phased embedding now, which is very cool. So you can kind of control the flow of that. There were some update to the controlling of panes inside of Power BI. The example that this blog gave is that now you can actually open up an item and have all of the panes collapsed if you wanted to or expanded or what have you. There were also call outs to a lot of training on the developer side that you can go after. I know this is, I get this a lot where folks want to know more information about how to actually do embedding. And there is a lot of items there that you can go take a look at, including developer in a day, as well as some training for how to use authentication with Azure AD, which is very important. So go check out the blog for all the updates down below. Power BI Dataflows got a really big update, and this is that a workspace admin can now assign Azure Data Lake storage to an individual workspace and not have to rely on the tenant admin. This is amazing, right? So now you can have per workspace storage for better separation of the underlying data for Power BI Dataflows. A lot of people were asking for this, and it's awesome to see that it's coming out. The blog does mention that this is rolling out the, this week. And so if you go look at it today, I actually went and looked before I started recording. It's not there yet. So you can go check it out. It should be there by the end of the week, depending on what data region you are, because this is kind of a rolling update, depending, and it goes through the different regions, not everyone at once. So at some point it will be available in your tenant. Go check it out. It does call out that this is available for pro users as well as premium. So it's not a premium only item. All right, this is the big one a blog post highlighting that you can now block the creation of classic workspaces. Yay! This has been a long time coming. I know a lot of people were waiting for this capability, but this is now a way that you can actually block that creation of those classic workspaces. In addition, there's another tenant setting there that's been there for a little while where you can block the creation of the new workspace, the new enhanced workspaces as well. So now in the combination of both, you have full control over what actually gets created 
in your tenant. Just know that enabling this does not stop classic workspaces from working. If you already have some, those will still work. It just prevents any new ones from coming in. And I'll have more details about that going in a little deeper in my video on Thursday, so stay tuned for that. And if you are not the admin of your tenant for Power BI, go let them know that this is now available and they will probably want to take advantage of this, especially if you're using Microsoft Teams. Teams, I'm looking at you. All right, I want to hand this off to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned. Maybe it was something I didn't. Let me know in the comments below. I want to hear it. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.